Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we'll be working on navigate the iOS in the packet tracer activity. So before we start, there are three parts to this activity. Part one will be establish basic basic connections, access the CLI and explore help. Part two will be explore executing modes. Part three will be select the clock. So before we start the activity, Let's go through the scenario. In this activity, you will practice skills necessary for navigating the Cisco iOS, such as different user access modes, various configuration modes, and common commands used on a regular basis. You will also practicing accessing the context sensitive help by configuring the clock command. So here are some instructions on part one activity. Step one, connect PC1 to S1 using a console cable. Click the connections icon, the one that looks like a lightning bolt in the lower left corner of the packet tracer window. Let's go to the packet tracer, click the media connections, and these are some of the media connections that are on the back tracer. So select the light blue console cable by clicking it. The mouse pointer will change to what appears to the to be a connector with a cable dangling from it. So the blue one is right here, which is a console cable. If you see right here, the mouse a uh, pointer has changed to connector with the cable dangling from it. Click PC1, a window displays an option for an RS-232 connection. So connect the cable to the RS-232 port and drag the other end of the console connection to the S1. Connect the cable to the console port on the S1. Let's move to, so we already did the connection and we'll be moving to step two, establish a terminal session with S1. Click PC1, then select the desktop tab. So go back to the packet tracer, click PC1, and select the desktop tab. So there are four tabs right here, physical, desktop, programming, attributes. So we'll be clicking desktop tab. After clicking desktop tab, click the terminal application icon, verify the port configuration default settings are correct. Okay, we'll be clicking terminal icon and it says all the settings right here. What is the setting for bits per second? So bits per second will be 9,600. It's a default setting that is already on PC1. So we click OK. We are in the terminal now. So the screen that appears may have several messages displayed. Somewhere on the screen, there should be press return to get started message, which is right here. Press enter what prompt displays on the screen. Let's press enter. It shows S1 greater than sign. So we are done uh, with the step two. We'll be starting the step three now. Explore the iOS help. The iOS can provide help from commands depending on the level of access. The prompt currently displays is called user executed mode. And the device is waiting for a command. The most basic form of help is to type question mark at the prompt to display a list of commands. So right on packet tracer on the PC1 terminal, you'll be putting a question mark for a command. And it says list, it shows me a list of commands that I can use 
in this terminal. What commands are displayed at the prompt? Type TE and then a question mark. So these are the types of commands that are listed and we'll be typing TE then a question mark. So there are two commands that are listed as, which is telnet and terminal. This type of help is known as context sensitive help. It provides more information as the commands are expanded. So let's move to the part two of this activity. In the part two of this activity, you will switch the privilege executing mode and issue additional commands. So we'll be entering the privilege executing mode and to enter the privilege executing mode, you have to give a command, give a command of enable. And if you see the prompt change to S1 hash, that means we are in a privilege executing mode. And to go back to a user privilege mode or user executing mode, you can either do control Z or end. Oh. That's not it. Uh, or you can do exit. Yep. You can use any of that to exit from privileged executing mode to user executing mode. So go back to the instructions. It says type EN and press the tab key. EN tab key and it changes to enable. What this means is this is called command completion or tab completion. When part of a command is typed, the tab key can be used to complete the partial command. If the character's types are enough to make the command unique, as in, this, as in the case of the enable command, the remaining portion of the command is displayed. So you can use any commands and press tab. It will complete the command for you, which is so easy for us to do any, and to do any commands on a terminal. So let's press enter and what prompted type the question mark. So it says S1 hash will be putting a question mark and he has given us this commands we can use in a privilege executing mode. So one command start with the letter C in user executing mode. Yeah. So how many commands are displayed now that privilege executing mode is active? Hint, you could type C, then question mark. C, question mark, we have one, two, three, four, five. Clear, clock, configure, connect, copy. So there are five commands that are listed once we do C, then question mark. The so step two of this activity, enter global configuration mode. When in privilege executing mode, one of the commands starting with this letter C is configure. Type either the full command or enough of the command to make it unique. Press the tab key to issue the command and press enter. So we will be putting C O N F and tab, and it will change our. I will fill our command with the configure, and press enter. 
So it is asking us, do you want to configure from terminal memory or network terminal? Press enter. And what does the prompt, uh, prompt change? It changes to S1 config. This is called global configuration mode. This mode will be explored further in upcoming activities and labs. For now, return to privilege, privilege executing mode by typing end, exit, or control Z. So for now, we'll be using control Z, which is quick and easy way to go back to privilege executing mode. Part three of this activity will be setting the clock. So in the step one, use a clock command. Use a clock command to further explore help and command syntax type show clock at the privilege executed mode. So we'll be typing show clock. And it shows us the time, date, and a year, and a day. So what information is displayed? What is the year that is displayed? It is 1993. So move on to the next question. Use the contact sensitive help and the clock command to set the time on the switch to the current time. Enter the command clock and press enter. So we'll be putting clock and enter, oops. It says incomplete, incomplete command. Move on to the next question. The percentage incomplete command message is returned by the iOS. This indicates that the clock command needs more parameter. Anytime more information is needed, help can be provided by typing a space after the command and the question mark. So, right back to our PC1 terminal, clock, then question mark. And it is asking to set, set the time and date. Moving on to another question, set the clock using the clock set command. Process it through the command one step at a time. So clock set, then a question mark. It's asking us to put our minutes, seconds for the current time. So what would have been displayed if only the clock set command had been entered and no request for help was made by using the question mark. So let's see this. And it says incomplete command. Let's move on to our next question of this activity. Based on the information requested by issuing the clock set command, enter a time of 3 p.m. by using 24 hour format of 15.0000. Check to see if more parameters are needed. On our PC1 terminal, we'll be typing clock set 15 zero 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 oops instead of t i type r so let me fix this real quick clock set it says incomplete command So based on the information requested by issuing the clock set command, enter a time by issuing 24 format, check to see if more parameters are needed. So we'll be doing a question mark after it. It says one slash 31, day of the month, month, month of the year. Attempt to set the date to 0, 01, 31, 2035 using the format requested. It may be necessary to request additional help using con context sensitive help to complete the process. When finished, issue the show clock command to display the clock setting. 
the resulting commands output should display as show clock this time. So if you are not successful, try the following command to obtain the output of all. So we'll be setting a clock. Clock set. 150000 30, 31 Jan 2035. Oops, again, I'll change the R to T and press enter. And let's give a command of show clock. It does show us at 15.07 UTC, even say January 31st. 2035. So we are good at this side. Let's move on to step two. Explore additional commands messages. The iOS provides various outputs for incorrect or incomplete commands. Continue to use the clock command to explore additional messages that may be encountered as you learn to use the iOS. Issue the following command and record the message. Click CL, tap, nothing shows because command. So there are two commands. So it is not unique command to uh, use a tap, tap key to complete a command because there are two clear and clock. So we can use CLO, then tap, which will finish the command. So what information will be returned? Uh, nothing, it's just giving us the same command. So we will put in clock and enter, it says incomplete command, what information will be returned, incomplete command, clock set 25, 25, zero, Zero. We know it's not gonna work because the day ends at 24 hours. So invalid input and clock set 15. thirty two. So our month has only 34, 31 days, so it won't go and what information was returned it says invalid input detected with this in this video we have seen how to navigate the ios in this packet twister activity if you have any questions any suggestions please feel free to comment below stay tuned and i will see you in the next video